city of San Clemente began with a vision in the backing of some wealthy investors. Ole Hansen, seen here, was the mastermind behind the development of San Clemente in the mid-twenties. The city would eventually incorporate in 1928. After his tenure as mayor in Seattle, Hansen set a course to develop what he coined a Spanish village by the sea. His goal was to provide a playground of sorts for citizens to enjoy any number of activities ranging from horseback riding, golf, swimming, just to name a few. The remnants of many of the original horse trails that Ole Hansen laid out in the city still remain as city medians in streets such as Valencia and South Ola Vista. His connections as former mayor of Seattle were no doubt responsible for the fact that Seattle's pro baseball team traveled to San Clemente for spring training. The field is gone now and replaced with houses in what many locals call the Bowl, just south of the Miramar Theater. Ole Hansen also spearheaded the construction of what was then a world-class swimming pool. I know a great number of former lifeguards probably got their first swimming lessons in this pool. I know I did. With the stock market crash came a slowdown in home sales and construction. Sank money was to grow slowly until after World War II. It was at this time that the requirements for strictly Spanish-style architecture for all homes and businesses were dropped. So, it was with Ole Hansen's original vision and St. Clemente's proximity to some of the best waves and climate in the world that laid the groundwork for what was to become one of the most prestigious and admired lifeguard departments on the coast of California. Well, it was in about 1937 uh, that I was hired as a lifeguard. Of course, I worked up until 1940 and the Army got me, but during that time, uh, it was kind of primitive, but uh, the lifeguarding, you had uh, we didn't have a lot of equipment, and you had to use your body, mostly, <laughs> for different things. We had the torpedo cans and that kind of stuff. I think the, the first lifeguard was probably Bunny Hansen. His dad was the one that laid out the whole town, started the whole town. He worked up there probably just before I came on. And uh, to uh, pass as a regular lifeguard, I took a junior course first. And the two were trained to, to break the, the, to the carries, when you carry a person. Uh, or you, you go in and, and give them help and have to get them to shore. Well, we had different carriers and then people that were real excitable and fighting for their life. And if they happened to grab you first, uh, we were trained how to get out of their hole. And yet, still hold on to them one hand, turn them over. Now, was there was there a headquarters at all, a building at all that you called headquarters down at the pier? Not really, not really. No, we had uh, a couple lifeguard towers. And that's all. And uh, we had, let's see, we had one phone. Now, what what type of buoys did you use? What type of? Well, the first ones we had, uh, they didn't come out yet with the rubber ones you could put around a person, and they were torpedoes. They were about so long, and, uh, and you had to strap around your shoulder. And we called them torpedo cans. We call them cans, but they worked good. And they had little ropes on the side that your patient, if he was just a tired swimmer, he could hold on to it you know, until they got him in. We didn't have a jeep then, and they came in later. But uh, you did everything by walking. And, well, even the lifeguards that got taught by the lifeguards in, in Long Beach, and they did the same thing. They didn't have any, any vehicles either. They did it all by foot, running, you know, running. 
How much did they pay you oh, yeah. back in uh, 1937 yeah, to be a lifeguard? I think I got a, I, I got I made a hundred dollars a month as lifeguard in them days. Lifeguard didn't make much money. Now, what were some of your duties as lifeguard? Well, we kept the beach clean for one thing. As soon as you came on in the morning, you had to pick up things that was left, and uh, we kept it clean and we uh, kept the the kelp that would come in off the big kelp beds. Sometimes we'd rake them up in the pile and the city would come down and pick them up. And, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, before the people all get down there, well, I'd do an exercise swim. I'd swim around the pier. Well, whoever was there with me, sometimes there'd be two of us there the same many at, that, at that time. Now, do you have any particular rescue that you perform that sticks out in your mind? Well, yeah, I, I, we made a, quite a few rescues. It all depends how the surf was, you know. If we got a heavy surf and we got that current coming from the south and it was a real bad current, that would really drag the people right off the feet. Well, you'd go in, you never have a dry pair of trunks on make a lot of rescues there to get them out of there. And, uh, and if they sw swam on the south side of the pier, uh, th th that you'd have to take them through the pier. There was no way you could fight them with a person that you're hauling in against that, that current coming direct from the south. Do you remember the, the storm of 1939 that, that uh, washed, that destroyed the pier in San Yeah, I was, on, I was on duty 24 hours a day, right there. What, what do you remember about that storm? On the pier, well, let's see. I think the one day it made 40 rescues before the pier went out, because we had the beach blocked off, the people would go by and they'd go out and get, they'd get up to their waist, and they were done, they were gone. They'd, they'd get pulled out. Now, how big do you estimate the surf being? Well, the surf would get up to, well, the surf, when the, when it got real bad, I had to have the police department down to help me. Um, they stayed on the, this end of the pier, wouldn't let nobody out. The waves got to be 25 and 30 feet high when the, when the pier went. I made rescues in that, in those waves. The people would get out and they couldn't get in. And, and definitely, if they were on the south end of the pier, I'd have to go in and take them under the pier. Well, one particular man that lived in San Clemente, very wealthy man, well known, he had a big mansion right above the pier named Mr. Barto. He was a paraplegic. And damn, if he didn't go in, the, he, he came down the beach. And he went in the water, he had his trunks on, and he, he went in and got on the south, south end of the pier, and he couldn't do nothing, he couldn't fight the current, couldn't swim because he couldn't use his legs. See. And so I went in after him, and I told him, now we're going to have to do one thing you've never done before. I'm going to take you through this pier. I said, that's the only way we're going to get out of here. I went in with my torpedo can and then made sure he was holding on to it. I said, so we're going to go in now. I said, one thing, don't grab the pilings. Don't hold on the pilings. And we'll go through the pier and we'll end up way down on the beach because the current's so strong, but we'll get in. So I said, just let me do everything. Well, anyway, he got into the, we got into the pier and damn, he didn't hold on to the, the barnacles on the piling, and I told him, leave go, please leave go. And he wouldn't leave go of it. And I had to finally get up there and pull his arms down and get him out of that thing. And he was swearing at me. He said, leave me alone, leave me alone. Yeah. Anyway, I finally got him out and got him on the other side of the beach. Three days later, the old guy passed away. You know, I think it was from, you know, the excitement. What sticks out in your mind about well, I mean, working for this, the city as a lifeguard. Yeah, I enjoyed the work. If I had to do it all over again, I'd do it again. And I, did, I enjoyed, uh, you know, helping people. And it wasn't a hard job, but uh, 
The only yeah. equipment we had was a pair of binoculars usually in our towers. And we kept a good eye on them. And uh, we, uh, we always believed in, don't wait till somebody gets in real trouble, go in before they get in trouble. Um, now, I know that when I was a lifeguard, one of the things was uh, the girls always swarmed around the lifeguard yeah, tower. Right. Is it the same thing back in the 30s? Same thing. Same. All the pretty girls. A lot of pretty women, like many young girls. And some of them are still around today. Really? That I know, yeah. Well, some things never change. They always talk about it. So I did. It was on a big holiday, and uh, we had big waves. And uh, this one girl, she lived in town, very good swimmer herself, very good. All the kids were good swimmers in town. Well, anyway, she made her own bathing suits, two-piece. You remember the two-piece? And she made it out of a terry towel. It looked real nice on her, I'm telling you, it looked nice. But she, it was so hot, she, so she went in the water, and she, was, she could body surf. She body surfed and lost the bottoms. And so she was waving to me, and I knew what was wrong right away. So I grabbed another towel, and I took a towel out to her. I says, here, you can wrap this around you, and you go on in. I got her in, okay. And then I, I, I dove down and got her bottoms, and I said, I don't think you're gonna put them on here, it's gonna be pretty hard. So we had a dressing room under the pier, and I, I let her go in there and put her bottoms on. And that was about the funniest one I had. Oh, we still, still talked about that today. I think I'd probably talk about that as well. She's a damn good looking girl. <laughs>